apology. I apologize. The same way you dragged me and apologize the same way. What's up? What? A sorry ain't gonna kill you. I didn't do you right, bro. I still have my stance. You could even have your same belief, but the way you went about that shit was foul. And I deserve an apology. They did it for Vanessa Williams after they stripped her of her crown for some old pictures of some shit that even have nothing to do with her winning the Miss America, but they use anything just to drag somebody down. But years later, she was vindicated. We're sorry we didn't go about that the right way. When I fuck up, I say sorry and mean it. I wrote a song about it that everyone seems to be able to sing and identify with. But when I actually do say it not singing, now it's a problem. I told y'all, you know my other side. Y'all sang that with me. It was fine as long as I sang it. But when I said it, crucify him, kill him, get rid of him. We don't care if he's grieving. We don't care what he's lost. We don't care what his family's going through. We can care less how his family feels about how he's going through this because my family was getting dragged at the same time. It wasn't just me. My family was embarrassed behind this shit. Just me being put on the spot and answering questions. And niggas literally just putting out all kind of shit about me because I'm just keeping it up. And y'all doing the same shit and more. The fuck? And now you come around like, oh, yeah, he wasn't done right. How am I supposed to feel good about this? Why do you think I want to revisit that trauma scene? I have been quiet. I haven't said nothing. I've been doing my thing, trying to recover my life, trying to make a living, trying to recoup it, regroup. It's been a decade. Where belief is painful, we are slow to believe. It takes a considerable time for our disbelief to dissolve. And until it does, we seem to be looking at everything through God's curtains. When we see it's not the vision, that the vision is not made possible by our real sight, the sounds and words that filter through are not the products of our real hearing. The rooms that we uh, move our bodies through are alien rooms and the world itself is a strange place with otherworldly qualities. You'll feel like you're going to the grocery store, but you're like a zombie. After when you're going through grief and just not just grieving like uh, relationship griefs too. like if you break up with someone, it feels like a death. Some of y'all went through breakups during pandemic. Some 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 of y'all went through uh, 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 split ups or divorces or separations or whatever it may be on top of the struggle of the pandemic, the challenges of a pandemic. Some of you have children. So you're trying to navigate. How do I homeschool while I'm grieving my parents? <laughs> my, their grandparents are gone. I'm grieving my grandparents, <laughs> their grandparents, and I'm still supposed to teach them and dress them and bathe them and feed them and look calm and make sure they don't feel unsafe. I salute you parent who are parents who have lost your parents or your grandparents while you're still raising a child during this, this part. And I'm not saying that the church itself is evil or bad, but I do have to say for those of us who keep on putting out love and agape and unconditional and restore folks with meekness. I'm telling you, I was not a recipient of that. I'd like to see it. Now that y'all suddenly got so much compassion, because maybe a, a generation is passed and it's not that big of a deal now. Still doesn't mean that the feeling of the loss and the, the, the grappling with what is truth, who is real, what is real. 
parents, I don't understand how you're doing it. I, I have a dog and it's hard. Okay? Just to make sure I'm being a good dad to my dog. That's a dog. That's not a kid. It's like a kid, but it's not a kid. So you combine that with grief, with lies, with people dragging you, with gossip, with scandal, with racism, with the pandemic, uh, no fucking stimulus checks. I know I'm not the only one. Don't hang up on me now. I'm calling long distance. continue just like my life bittersweet mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. man I feel so much better just be fair if you're going to make up a rule, let it apply to everybody. Don't change it up for those who you like. I can follow the rules if y'all quit switching them. I can reach the goal if you quit moving the goalpost. When I feel the stunning blow of disbelief because of grief, I go to a place where I feel, feel comfortable and rest for a moment or take a short walk until that shock disappears. And then I will recognize what these little shocks will happen over and over again. I'll be sitting there and everything will be fine. And out of nowhere, the emotion of who I lost suddenly comes on me or the trauma I've been through as a result of the stuff I've been through. I'll have dreams about the day that Lexi interviewed the day before it came out, I was that day before because I filmed it in March. It came out in September. That whole six months I was anticipating. Yeah, you can try to eat and go have fun and blah, 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 blah. But come September, you know, you know that shit's over, right? You know it's over, right? Because Bishop Wagner called in. He told her not to air it. She aired it anyway. And I'm done. Yep. Attorney yelled at me. Lost friends. Lost label mates. Lost the grip of members at the church. That was a hard time having to preach that word. And afterwards, while she was dying, because she got diagnosed with cancer right when that aired. And have to come home and wipe your mom's ass and clean her up and smell her urine and shave her head. Mm -hmm, the shaving cream. I didn't know until the wig came off. that she had lost all her hair while niggas in my city was still dragging me. Niggas in the church community still dragging me and I'm shaving my mom's head and I'm telling her, mom, you're still beautiful. Don't cry. My nephew's about to come inside the room while I'm shaving her head. And then I tell him, stay out of here because I don't want him to know that his grandma doesn't have hair anymore underneath and she just doesn't want to be seen bald headed. But I told her, mom, stop it. You're still a beauty queen. I said, mom, what would you like to have happen? She said, I just want the Lord to heal my body. And the way it, she smelled when she couldn't contain herself and when she started losing bodily functions. Then back to the pulpit. More bullshit. <laughs> Put niggas on in the game. 
Now the motherfuckers don't even know my name. Glad you won everything. You did it. You don't know what it's like to have your whole city turn against you on top of your organization that you're a part of, on top of the internet. That shit was hard. And now, the person who I would talk to about that stuff or who would take me away from that stuff is dead too. I'm walking through this shit with you, but it pulls, when one person dies freshly, it pulls up all these old things that I thought I had gotten through. I'm not perfect. I've never claimed to be. I have always spilled the tea on myself through my music and lyrics. I have always kept it 100 with y'all since Silent X. I have always told y'all what was going on in my life through my music. And that's part of the sacrifice of not being commercially accepted because you just keep it too fucking real. Well, now we all having to keep it real, aren't we? Because we're all in the same boat now. No one's not that popular. You're not so popular anymore right now, are you? It wasn't worth it. Yeah. It was hard to have compassion about the situation. When I first met the person, they wouldn't even speak to me. They were so arrogant and cruel to me that it was hard for me to feel sorry for the nigga because it's just like, I remember how condescending you were. I remember how flippant they were at the BMI awards. I remember how they looked at me in that front row when I showed up when they thought they had killed me. That's why I said I know I've been changed. That's why I sang it that way. That's why I went there. I specifically asked for that song because I needed them to see that you didn't kill anything. If anything, you turned me into the Terminator. You don't mess with a nigga that has nothing to lose. I have nothing to fucking lose. We're hurting out here. Could you have a little compassion? I'm a strong nigga. You ain't got to like me, but you got to respect me. I haven't got that back. I, haven't, I get that kind of information back in my DMs. People tell me how much they appreciate me in their inbox or that they're praying for me in the inbox or that they know I'm grieving or I'm hurting in the inbox. But that public like, nah, back up off this nigga, leave him alone. I didn't, none of that. So yeah, I am looking kind of like sideways like, oh, so what? And even if you want to say that, why are you tagging me? Don't tag me. I don't want to know. And we even want to talk about the demonic labels, gospel labels. We ain't going to talk about that. It's okay. We all grieving. I will recognize these little shocks will happen over and over again, but that I will eventually have days that are completely free from them. It's so true. Yesterday, I didn't have a bad day. Today, I didn't have a bad day. You know what I'm saying? But the moments will sneak up on you. 
a song will come on, a saxophone will play, a perfume will whisk by in the airport. You're like, my mom used to wear that. Oh, my dad used to wear, you know, polo, Ralph Lauren or whatever, whatever it is he was wearing. There's these triggers that you'll, that'll take you back to that moment. Or I can't even stomach listening to certain artists. Like their ministry doesn't, I can't even hear what it is that they're trying to convey. Cause all I can keep thinking about is how they just treated me like shit. So no, I'm not going to be fake acting like I feel something. I don't feel anything, but this is some really shady shit. As long as you get that number one spot, you can care less what happens to anybody else. You're so into competition and, 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 and trying to... See, the thing about it is we keep trying to do gospel versions of mainstream stuff and we don't even do it well. And the same story that happens to these artists on American Idol and X Factor is that they want the story of these artists. Very few go on to be a Kelly Clarkson or Leandria. Most of them are forgotten. Has anyone checked on Sister Aiken? Has anyone checked on Brother Rogers? Or after Tide does its part and Toyota does its part, and after they get that first album, do you really hear from these people anymore? Do you check on them anymore? Now that you can't book them and they can't, you can't be their stylist and you can't do their booking anymore, pretend to be their manager when you're not their manager, you just book that particular gig, but you're telling everybody it's your client. Okay. Anybody checked on her lately? Or is she done now? Y'all over it? I'm sure she's not over it. I'm sure she could use a how you doing. But once they're done with that storyline, they move on to the next person. First of all, why are we competing in Christ? It's not a competition. No one can out sing, out praise, out dance. It's, you'd be surprised. The ones that don't sound that good probably would win in God's eyes. But y'all go for all the isms and schisms and looks and nooks and flips and crannies and you miss out on the whole point. Yeah, they got the technique, but no yokes to destroy. When's the last time they led somebody to Christ on these shows? Do, we, do they ever do a sinner's prayer on the show? Has that ever happened? Is there ever a call to discipleship with, you know... 40 million people watching or they're just supposed to find that out and just be focused on the competition now. And when the Lord does want to come in, y'all shut it down because you don't want people to know that's how we really get down in church. But now you don't have a church to go to. So you don't have to show them how you praise the Lord. You can't. Now what? Now that your position's gone at your church, now that you're not the, the, the main squeeze that everybody goes crazy about on the praise team, that no one cares anymore, what are you made of? What is your relationship like? How are you dealing with grief? How are you navigating your emotions, your desires, your thoughts, your temptations, your reality, your truth? Can you share it? Can you confess your faults one another, with one another? and restore each other with meekness, I, based off of what I've seen over the past three days, absolutely not. Okay. A pause that lets me gather my physical and emotional energy is necessary when you're grieving. A Selah. Some of y'all need to leave the city that the depths happen in so that a new foundation can be laid and you're not constantly driving past the scene of the crime over and over again, being reminded of how they died over and over again. You're still living in the same house. You're still living in the same neighborhood. Some of you can't change that circumstance. 
But if you can, you need to leave. Well, what about my family? I got to take care of my big sister and I'm responsible. Listen, you're responsible for your health. You are responsible for your mental health now. None of us can help you now because we're all trying to help ourselves. No one's saying it out loud because y'all still posting like you still got it together. But the truth is, shit's getting real now. The world seems so empty now, as if there is no one in it. On top of feeling that way if we were living in a functional society, how much more do we feel a different level of absence and isolation now that we are on lockdown while grieving? Sometimes when one person is missing, the whole world seems depopulated. Does anyone understand or does that register with anyone? This isn't some rant. This isn't rage. This is since y'all want to dig up my bones and try to compare notes with a situation that ain't even related. Here's the fullness. Folks is hurting. I was one of them. Thank God I was able to read books outside of that system. Thank God I had friends outside of that system. I would have been crazy or dead by now. And most of you, someone actually told a friend of mine, they had hoped that I died behind it, that I would take my life. And they repented of it years later. They said, the way I was so religious, when that happened to you with Lexi, I wanted you to kill yourself. Just so, you, we, so it could be said, God made him an example that this is what happens when you do that. They told me they they were hoping and wouldn't be surprised if I had and would have been just fine with it. Can you imagine hearing that? From a believer? Well, I didn't say nothing about you being slave. Yeah, but you sat around and listened and watched people do it around you and didn't speak up. So now that you do it, you look like a suspect. You guilty now? Change of heart? Oh, different artist. This is an artist you like. Okay. I'm not bitter. I'm better. I've healed. I've grown. But as I was healing, I got another blow. Whoops, there goes another friend of yours. Whoops, there goes another friend of yours. Whoops, there goes another bishop. Bye bye. Every week now. It's getting closer. Oops, there goes another family member. Oops, there goes another friend of your... Another week of this. Oops, there goes your job too. Oops, there goes your car too. Oops, there goes your relationship too. Oh, but don't forget about registering them for virtual school. Oh... So what part of that prophecy that y'all told me is happening for me now? At the time being, all those scriptures go out the window. The reality is you feel like you're the only person in this world. And some of you, you are the only person in this world. Your, your family is gone. You out here, your parental shoots have been deployed. Your grandparents' um, shoots, parachutes have been deployed. You out here as an adult orphan in a COVID stricken society that only seems to be happening in the United States at this rate. With no help, no vaccine, no stimulus, no church, no Disneyland, no Six Flags, no Universal Studios. 
all the things I would normally use. The escapism. Thank God I have music. If I didn't have music, I don't know where I'd be right now. And I mean it. Without Soul Train Music Awards last night, I'm telling you, I'm not sure if I could have made it through a week of Troy's sudden demise. But the arts is also, to me, they're essential workers. And many of our essential workers are out of work. But you don't care about that. All you care about is the next scandal. The next story. Who's the next person we can destroy? Who's the next person we can spill tea on? I'm saying have at it. I'm good. But if we're going to bring this topic up, the only song I want to hear is I'm sorry. I could have did it a different way. And you know what? I'll move the fuck on. I'll move on. But at least give me that. If you're going to bring me into this. While I'm grieving. The loved one who died had filled our world. We were content to be with that one person. There were others around that, we, that cared for them, but our loved one was the center of our, excuse me, our universe. Excuse me. And when the center was removed, all else faded away. Now, the other people we see and hear have little or no effect on us. So it's even though they're saying or trying to say the right things, nothing, nothing will suffice that void. Now, earlier today, I was laid out on this floor going in on language of tears. That's not me just trying to put out something to be cute. That's me trying to help you get through like I'm trying to get through. Crying out and snotting and going into intercession. Yes, I sure did earlier tonight. I'm spiritual and I'm human. And they're not a contradiction. They actually help each other out. Because some of y'all so spiritual, you're not keeping it a buck. You so spiritual that you can't meet the people's natural needs. Before Jesus taught anybody, he fed them first. He got to their natural needs first. He healed their bodies first, then sat them down to teach them after he fed them and made sure they were good. It's hard to hear a sermon on an empty stomach. It's hard to say amen when you're thirsty. So meet the immediate needs. Meet their grief. Meet their disillusionment first. Meet their abandonment first. Meet that place first. I promise you, they'll be way more open to receive the ministerial aspect of what you're trying to provide if you would meet their natural human, their, the, the heart of their humanity first. And go ahead and get mad. I give zero. Whatever. I don't care. Nobody cares. That's what you don't get. Nigga, nobody cares. Do you guys really care? Who, who cares? Mind your own business. I can't believe it. if you don't stop acting pseudo shocked. We are sometimes surprised by the occasional close friend who disappears from our lives. Right after the funeral is over. This is the person we felt that we could depend on. Yep. Troy was very dependable. One of the people we liked the best and trusted the most to come through. When we sense that we have been deserted, we feel angry and disappointed. It is only natural that we would be upset. We feel that the person has been selfish or superficial, but that is not necessarily true. Some people cannot give comfort because they were not raised in an environment which solace was a part of people's behavior. It is alien to them to try to extend any deep sustaining kind of consolation. They care, but they don't know where to begin. They are afraid of their own feelings as much as they are afraid of ours. And so they don't try to make a connection. We can recognize that others have their limitations and that their experiences have shaped them, shaped them differently from ourselves. They are not bad people. They are simply people who, for one reason or another, are unable to join with us in our sorrow. And that is what we need the most right now.
we are unable, these people are unable to join in with us in our sorrow. You so busy trying to make sure I'm destroyed so I'm no longer your chart competition that you forgot I'm still your brother in Christ first. So in that department, we failed each other miserably. And want to know why nobody wants to join. And want to know why nobody wants to believe in it. And like, I'm good on it. Because who wants to be a part of that? Who in their right mind would feel safe enough to be human enough in that type of an environment where the people are supposed to be who are spiritual since you're so mature? You're supposed to restore people with some like gentleness, knowing you could be next. Why are you laughing and kicking about his misfortune? You don't know who's about to put you out there. Then maybe you'll see this is not the way we're supposed to be doing each other, regardless of church or secular or sacred or secular. It's just black folks in general. There's some toxic sites out there that are designed just to pull each other down and not build each other up. And then we want to put up some hearts and dove emojis when the niggas commit suicide. Praying for you. All that pseudo like condescending. Yeah, I'm praying for you. You're not praying. You're not praying. You're P-R-E-Y-ing. Praying. While I'm down, sick him. He's bleeding. Here come the piranhas. He's bleeding. Here come the, the sharks. She's bleeding. Oh, here they come. Dun, 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 dun. Devour, devour because we need to devour her because if we don't devour her, they're going to look at us next. So let's, let's, let's scare everybody else into the... That's why I can't, I can't get joy out of people's misfortune like that. Even if I don't like them, I don't want that for them. Because I don't want, I, I really like my own life. So I don't sit around plotting and thinking about ways for people I don't like to have bad things happen in their life. Because I don't want that shit coming back to me. I measure every grief I meet with narrow probing eyes. I wonder if it weighs like mine or has an easier size. Other people tell me how bad they feel, but they don't know what grief really is. It seems to us that no one can know how we feel when we lose a grandparent or a parent, a child, a best friend, a pet. No one could have suffered as we do. No one is carrying the weight of a loss as we are. The death of that person who was so special to us produces a grief that no one can imagine. And this is the God's truth. I thank God for music. That's why I go on so hard on music. That's why I'm constantly putting my best efforts into my music because that's my journal. So that somebody else can know they are not in this world by themselves with certain feelings or certain experiences or certain misfortunes or certain losses that there's a nigga out here that knows what it feels like and survived it and is better because of it, but yet still grieving through a fresh one. I had already conquered everything else, but this one right here made me get real about the things that I'm really not happy about. Grief will make you start telling the truth when you were being polite because you don't care. I could care less. All I care about is that someone who's watching this, who feels like they don't know what they're going to do about rent next month and figuring they're about to get evicted. And they're still grieving at the same time while they're trying to manage their finances and their homes and their children. That they're not out here feeling this way alone. So many PKs done dirty because they were the pastor's kid. So a higher standard was set upon them as if they weren't human too. Or those, the kids of the, uh, the, pastors who have to watch their parents get dragged when they split up or some scandal or some divorce or they get there's so much stuff that has happened embarrassing things that have happened to all of us that I feel like in general there needs to be reconciliation reconciliation isn't saying nice words after the niggas dead that you just killed 
How are you reconciled now by saying wonderful things that this corpse can't even hear? But you hated them while they lived. I can't tell you how many preachers could not stand my father that were at that funeral up in that stand looking grand. I had one preacher who, while I was, they were taking my mother into the mausoleum inside of the, she was in the coffin, we were in the elevator, and he's checking voicemails. You know, this is, this is just uh, another day's work. Cracking jokes at the funeral. Uh, yeah, it's a joke. It's fun. It's just, this is funny. This is a joke to you. This is, you, you're checking voicemails on top of my mom's casket. Like you have to check other things. What? So yeah, and see, and what happens is you get put in the crazy box. Oh, they crazy. Oh, they this. That's how they try to like make you feel like, oh no, he's nuts. No, 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 nigga. Crazy people be telling the truth. That's why they call them crazy. So that you don't believe they truth. Oh, they crazy. They crazy. Nah. Crazy folks have no reason to lie. So that, that's a good trick they use. Oh, they nuts. They crazy. They, they lost it, honey. Oh, he's so far gone. The, he's, oh, he's gone. He's, he's on the other side. I'm on the other side. If I am on the other side, it's because of what I've experienced on the inside. And if that makes me crazy, then probably. They don't make them like me no more. I'm that nigga. Saying the shit y'all won't say out loud. The feelings that they won't let you experience and, and dehumanize you, make you feel like you crazy for feeling this way. After they done promised you the world and now you left empty handed. What happened to all those promises? What, where did they all go? You got people changing their prophecies after they've already prophesied the wrong president. They go back and retract their statement and y'all still buy it. There's a strong delusion happening right now. Am I the only one out here looking like, are these niggas zombies? Y'all gonna leave me out here? When we grapple with the death of a loved one, we are grappling with the formidable opponent. Be but as we work our way through the most difficult of times, as we deal with this enormous challenge by confronting what we feel and need, we make it possible for ourselves to change and grow. The growth we will achieve is not something we can imagine now at the beginning of our grieving process. But when we look back in a few months, we will marvel at, at what we've been able to do, not just with the grief of the loss of someone, but the grief of the normalcy of the life that we had. The pro of that is now that we're all off of that hamster wheel of life and church and stuff and chasing and going and doing and sitting still with ourselves, we're having a problem with not having anywhere to go because now we have to face it and there's no way to get away from it. You got to face you. And there's some stuff I've had to look in the mirror and say, nigga, you fucked up. You have to be real with yourself. I can only speak about what I need from other people because I know I am a forgiven forgiver. I've done shit too. I fucked around too. We can all be destroyed very easily. We are all one fucking screenshot away from being fucked. Oh, it's not just artists, it's pastors too. It's not just pastors, it's politicians too. It's not just politicians, it's your parents too. No one is exempt here. We all have a whole other life. This part is a matrix. Your, your IG, that's a matrix. That's a, that's a presentation of who you are. But that's not you know my other side.
we're all a month away from being just like the person we look down on on the street. It's going to be a trip when you bunking in a shelter with someone you used to pass up on the street. Shit's getting real out here. It's amazing. Homeless people are doing just fine because they've already learned how to survive with all the bullshit that we have to have. They don't need Amazon. They make their own apartments. They make their own way. I know a nigga named Twist and a dog named Hobo. They get around and make it just fine with no place to stay. But we haven't developed those types of skills. Y'all, what if we didn't have Wi-Fi no more? Y'all would really be losing your shit right now. Because that's all we got. By design. So that all you can do to find comfort is through this way. But what, what, what if this is taken away? What happens then? What if there's no more virtual church? No more virtual award shows? What happens then? You go on everyone to have compassion on what you grieve. Then when your favorite show gets canceled, when your favorite actor contracts COVID and dies at a young age, you're going to need grief, counseling and understanding and compassion then. But no one is in a leadership position to do it because we're all pretending it's not happening. But it is. So for those of you who know it is happening, I got you. I'm a forgiven forgiver. I've lost a lot. I've gained a lot. I've lost it all and got twice back. Have I done everything right? No, but I have kept it a buck. That's one thing you can say about this nigga right here. I've kept it a buck and it's never good enough. It's, it's still never good enough. Even if you do, it almost makes you feel like, let me just, let me just play the game. It'd be easier. And that's what a lot of them are doing. It's not that they're bad people they just don't have the tenacity in the constitution to be able to stand up for what they know is right because money is more important and position and status is more important than checking on their brother and their sister that you ain't spoke to in eight and nine years but i'm the one out of order but now it makes sense now that you've gotten your divorce Cause you was giving me hell when I was going through my shit, but now you've been divorced twice and remarried, but it's not a problem for you because at the time I was going through it, I was out of the will of God. I was the, I was the, 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 the backslidden, uh, artist. <laughs> now the same ones who's given me grief been divorced. got remarried people who told me not to get one or try to go off of me about me having one ended up getting one what joy do you get out of seeing someone who's just trying to be real destroyed what joy do these sites get out of ruining people's life on purpose, even the ones that are doing wrong things, because the ones who are presenting all this mess and garbage, their own shit is completely fucked up. So let me drag everybody else down and shine a light on everybody else's shit so nobody really knows what the fuck I've done, who I've mistreated, who I've hurt, whose feelings I have hurt, which families I have destroyed. We all have planted seeds that we pray will return in crop failure. Every single one of us. There are things we planted that we hope never grow. When you're grieving, you're not thinking straight. So you'll make irrational decisions in a split second without thinking of three chess moves up the road, what this is going to mean for that property, for your family, for your finances, for your spirit and for your mental health. I'm telling you what I know. Every pastor does not leave money for their children. There are plenty of pastors that did not have their shit together after in their wills. There are plenty of artists that did not have their estates together. So shit just fell apart. And you're just left with all the pieces and a bunch of family members bickering over nothing because there was nothing fucking left. 
I understand this. I feel you. I got you. I'm a good dude. I'm not perfect, but I'm a good guy. Like, I don't want to see people destroyed like that. I don't like people fighting and bickering. I don't like seeing this. I don't care if, if I don't get along with the person. It still don't feel good. It's embarrassing to watch. While grieving. <sighs> As I face off against, against the powerful opponent, I know that I have the power to win and that winning will make me stronger. To make progress, I will not deny my grief. Because that's what some of y'all love to do. You want to deny it by getting busy. But eventually, busy gets tired. Busy starts saying, oh, you're not barking up this tree. I don't care how many little tasks and errands you put before yourself today. Guess what? You're not going to be able to function today because you aren't going to be able to stop crying the whole day. And you don't know why. Because nothing triggered it. Because you're trying to replace the grief with busy. That's what they would have wanted me to do. How do you know what they would have wanted you to do? Because if they did know what they, what they should have done for you, they would have left you with a cushion so you can survive it after they're gone. But they didn't do that. You assume they did that. Because that's the first thing a lot of y'all think of. As soon as someone dies, oh, well, what's in the will? What's in it for me? What's in the estate? Can I go raid their closets? Can I have their choir robes? Where's the jewelry? Where's the purse? Where's the shoes? I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it. I love you too, Mimi. And she'll tell you, niggas move on. Ain't nobody talking about Sister Carol right now. Ain't nobody talking about Sister Betty right now. Ain't nobody talking about Tank, my dad, right now. Ain't nobody talking about that. Ain't nobody talking about Diane Carroll right now. Ain't nobody talking about Michael Jackson right now. No one's talking about George Michael right now. Nobody's talking about Sherman Hemsley right now. No one's talking about Florence Henderson right now. No one's talking about that. You know why? Because we have fresh deaths this week. Why did this have to happen to me? I said the same thing. More than why me with Troy, it was like, why now? Why now? What? No goodbyes. They're just gone. Deal with it. Yeah, I understand what he's saying, but I just can't take his mouth. He ain't got to say all that. He ain't got He can express himself in a more positive way. OK, well, you come over here and help me navigate that. Show me how it should be done. Since you know how to navigate this and you still got all your family members with you. Wait till they start dropping. Then we'll see if I'm really that out of the will, if I'm that far gone. That's what people like to do. They like to put you in that crazy box, but don't let them do it. You, if that means you got to take up some boxing lessons, you got to start learning how to fish. You got to start learning how to do karate, whatever you got to do to start, you know, making something of your life and channeling that energy somewhere else. You got to do that. But just know, even with that, some days it's just going to hit you like a ton of bricks. My nigga ain't here no more. My mama ain't here no more. She ain't coming back. When Mother's Day comes around, do you know how hard it is to be on your timeline watching Mother's Day happen without a mother? Do you know how hard it is to watch these Zales commercials and Mother's Day commercials talking about everybody's mama and your mom's dead and you have to keep watching it? And even when you're trying to avoid it, it still comes up and you feel pissed and alone and you don't know what you're going to do. The holidays is fucked up. Christmas ain't the same. Easter comes too soon.
Death causes us to question many things. We may question the reason for our loved one's death, the reason he or she had to suffer, or the reason we must survive this ordeal. But regardless of how intently we search for answers to such questions, we cannot find them. Why we lament? Do we, why we lament? Do we have to endure this terrible time? What have we done to deserve this? Why are others' lives less difficult than our own? And it seems that way when you're going through grief initially, it seems like everybody's just fine. You're not just jealous that they have parents. It's almost like you get jealous of the fact that they just, it's nothing's bothering them because they're not going through it right now. That's an awful feeling to see how quickly the world goes on without you. When we actually look at our lives and the traumas and losses that we have experienced, most of us know that we have a burden, but it has been our burden. It is not one that we would trade for that of our friend or neighbor. Given the opportunity to exchange misfortunes, most of us would take our own and depart. Even though we had six months to anticipate it, some of us had months to anticipate deaths, okay? It doesn't make it any less devastating. The book I'm reading is called A Time to Grieve. And it's excellent. I took a personal sabbatical in Selah so that I could get away, heal, and try to grieve Troy's death properly. And while I was trying to do that, other current events began to trump all of that. And I was trying to protect, I could care less, I lost my friend. Not like I don't want, I want something bad to happen, but that's just not on my radar. My radar is just trying to like, wrap my mind around this random information I've just got that now I have to deal with. But it's the same thing when you get that sudden news about your mom or your dad. Like when my mom showed up um, at the door when I got back to LA. I've been back to San Diego um, after my father had passed in San Diego. So I was in LA when he passed. That was the longest trip. My uncle Les, who is also now dead, drove me from LA to San Diego. That was the longest two hour ride, knowing that when I got back home, my dad was gone. And when my mom greeted me at the door, she just passed out and I sang, uh, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. So I'm singing this to my mom as she just collapsed in my arms, all the different saints and stuff were at our parents' house. And I'm singing, because he lives, all of my fears are gone. And now I know, oh, oh. my mom still passed out in my arms on the floor. I'm on the floor with her singing, who holds the future? Just watching my mom collapse in my arms. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Even though my dad's dead, I'm still singing to my mom, encouraging her that because Jesus lives, we can face tomorrow. Until I walked into the bathroom hallway and saw that my dad had a shirt on that said, I still believe while he was dead on the floor. Can you imagine He died trying to go to a midwinter convention. My mom came home with the suitcases for the midwinter convention and he's on the floor.
I just spoke to him the day before because I, I was coming back down to do Bible class while he was out of town. He said, hey, bub, can you handle Bible class for me? I was like, sure, pop, I got you. That's really weird about Aunt D, because Aunt D had died of a heart attack the day before in church. So the day before my dad died, my aunt died. Wild niggas talking and trying to destroy me. And Can you imagine? Can you imagine what that felt like watching niggas just drag your ass while you at the lowest point, the most beckoned point? You've lost a parent. I'm not saying it'll ever stop. It's just the way of the world, I know, but it doesn't mean I have to say I like it. Doesn't mean I have to accept it. Not to mention that just a few months before this happened, I heard my dad, who's now dead, who was alive at my grandfather's funeral, screaming and crying for the first time in my life. And that was also traumatizing. As I also had to watch my grandfather in that casket and watch my dad grieve him just in March. So it's amazing to me how much credit I don't get for starting all over again after a brand that I had created was destroyed because of my setup. I was set. I felt like I was set up. It thank. God, I was set up because it pushed me to have the platform that I have now certified. 236 students in Brazil, 4,000 students in New York City. I've worked with all of the people I've admired all of my life, written for the best of them sang for the best of them, been on television, shooting movies, doing all kinds of things through all of this. And y'all still try to act like I don't exist. Like I don't have a story to tell. Like I'm not a resilient motherfucking black man. You gonna respect the Slade. That name is like a Muhammad Ali. Tone was like a Cassius Clay. It was good. It served its purpose. But when everyone shuts the doors for that brand to even function in a livelihood, I had no other option but to discontinue what was killed and to start all over again. It took 10 years and I'm still building. But that's why I was able to write songs like, I'm, 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 I'm still here. It doesn't matter how it was used or what was said about it. All I know is Cardi B sings it and so did Tashina Arnold the other night. Wouldn't I be able to write that song if I had killed myself? At the hands of the words of those who should have picked me up and dusted me off and restored me and loved on me and sent me somewhere on a vacation. Since y'all so rich and at the top of the charts, y'all should have sent me to some counselors and some vacationing and a whole spa. You think the artists got together and did that shit? No. Whatever happens to him, that's just, that's good. At least we ain't got to worry about him on the charts no more. That's, that's one piece of competition we ain't got to worry about no more. It's fucked up. Would you like it? No, I don't think you would like it. I'm a human like you, nigga. I'm, I got feelings too. I'm losing folks too. I already lost a grip. Nine this year, but that's just this year. Probably more to come. The year's not over. And you sitting up here and you watching and you agreeing. But are you speaking up? Not just for me, but for others who are like me, who have experienced things like me, other pastor's kids who have experienced things like me. We've been dealt some really weird cards 
So given the circumstances that PKs are given, we're already at a, we already are at a disadvantage from the beginning. So can we, in a pandemic, at least say, let's try to feel what they feel like. You ain't got to say it. I'm the shit. I'm that dude. They don't make them like me no more. That's why I want people to call me by the right name. No, that's not my that's not my government name. The only people who get to call me my government name is those who I feel know me long enough to call me my government name. Well, that ain't your name, it's Tony. No, that ain't my name either. I made that name up too. But now y'all want it back. It's a wrap. You can't hardly find any of it. Why? Because I had to change my algorithms. Every time when someone wanted to go search for my art, the first thing that popped up was some Tone A nonsense. Some old ass shit that don't even apply to me no more. So to change the trajectory of what keeps popping up when y'all go looking for me, I destroyed it so that now y'all could focus on the art and the heart of the matter. You're not going to control my narrative and my destiny. I'm going to turn this thing around. And yes, it was hard changing in a dress in a, a, a bathroom stall with a nigga shitting right next to me. Because that was the only dressing room I had when I was starting all over again. And I don't resent it. I don't regret it. It was awful. But I promised myself in that bathroom stall that I was going to dig myself up out of that pit. And whether you like Be Slate or not, whether you get into it or not, you're going to respect what it took to come from zero, start the fuck all the way over again and do it bigger than the first time. You're not going to play me no more. Never again. I earned the right to be called by the name I decide to call my brand starting all over again because y'all niggas was not going to stop me. Ever. You didn't call me, so you can't cancel my ass. Everybody think they can cancel somebody. You can't cancel shit. Okay. You didn't call me, so you can't cancel me. You can't you can't shut down something you never constructed or created. Who are you? When did you become so perfect and self-righteous that now you feel like you have the power to destroy somebody because you done type, well, cancel them. What the fuck? Well, I'm gonna, then don't book me then. Don't, I don't wanna be someplace where you only book phonies. You can keep that. God will make another way for me and he continues to do so. Why? Because I'm not sitting around waiting for him to do it for me. Faith without works is dead. Straight up. I get up and make things happen. He gives me the strength to do it, but he ain't going to do the whole job for me. So instead of me crying about how they did me, you heard me say nothing. I just kept working my ass off. And guess what? Every time y'all see me, you you try to you still try to ignore it like it ain't happening. But it is happening. Oh, I'm so glad I saw t- no, that wasn't Tone A. That that was killed. This was a B Slade situation. All these new things happening had nothing to do with that because you destroyed that. But grief gave me the courage and power to press forward when niggas was trying to literally destroy my name out of pure jealousy. And that's all it was. There's no reason for you to be that way unless you're insecure. And that's not my problem. I had to do the work too, and quarantine helped. Sometimes you gotta lose some people so you finally start telling niggas, no, I'm not showing up. I'm not picking your ass up. I'm not getting nothing from the fucking store. You go get it. Tired of being your gopher and you're doing all this stuff for you and you ain't, what have you done for me lately? Always doing stuff for you. 
tracks for free, recording for free, doing this for free, helping you out for free, only for what? For you to turn your back when I don't seem as convenient for your future career? Good luck with that. Good luck with that. That's how you get down. You forget so quickly the niggas that had your back. Being in public takes a toll with grief. When one is pretending, the entire body revolts. This is why none of us can take the bullshit no more. Because when you're going through something like what we're going through, all you want is the truth. Because everything now is a lie. Lie after lie. Why do y'all think I went so ham on that song, Change? You know why? because I turned that microphone into my punching bag and I took it out on that bag. I'm representing what all y'all feel. That's not just what I feel. I'm representing what y'all feeling, but no one's saying it. Where's the artist that's actually speaking up for the true feelings of the ones out here who's being called livestock now? We're not even humans to these motherfuckers. We're livestock. So we gotta, you gotta be smart now you got to be self-contained. you got to have your own television, your own lighting, which is good because you've been wasting time all this time anyway. You needed to learn how to do this shit on your own. Always make an excuse about what somebody ain't doing for you. Grief will teach you how to be self-sufficient. Grief will teach you how to figure shit out on your own. Grief will teach you how to have a relationship with God, not based off a of church or your parents' relationship with God, but who you really are in God. That's when you find out who you really are. Now that we ain't got no church, how is our relationship now with Christ? How close are we really? How much time do we really spend? Are we still mad at God because he took someone too early? That's a real thing, too. No one talks about that. Jesus was on the cross like, Father, why is thou forsaking me? Even he asks questions because sometimes God's logic does not make sense to humans' minds. Until years later, you'd be like, Lord, I see why you took this person out. That was to make me turn this corner or to go that way or to get out of that toxic relationship, to get out of that awful apartment to leave that neighborhood so I can make something of myself or to go back to school and, and do whatever I need to do. Am I talking right right now? Can I get some help? And I don't want no cash app on this one. I don't want no money on this one. I don't want no PayPal on this one. I don't, you know, that's not what this is about. I'm grieving with y'all's asses. So if I'm real enough to represent your needs and keep it real and walk you through this thing while I'm walking through it, the least you can do is make sure niggas ain't dragging my ass and stand up for a nigga who's doing nothing but keeping it a fucking buck. And if you don't like it, then kiss my ass. Sick of y'all. So messy and rude and mean. Help somebody. Pull them up. Don't, don't kick them while they're down. As we attempt to return to jobs, you know how hard it is just to get back in the frame of mind to go back to your job? Do you know your job don't even care that you're grieving? Do you know your job, your, your apartments don't care that there's a COVID pandemic going on? They still want that rent? As we attempt to return to our jobs and our social life or just to leave the house to do errands, we may feel that we must hold our heads up and keep acting brave. I know all about that. So we talk about things that don't interest us in, in, instead of talking about what plagues our hearts and minds. We reluctantly agree to do things in which we do not have the slightest bit of interest. This is the truth. You're late. I already put out two gospel albums. See what I mean? Y'all think I was dead or something. Now that you are here and you just zoomed in, you, whatever you think you need, I've already done it. That's just, that just goes to show you how much people thought I actually died. People thought I literally died. Yeah. 
I dropped three gospel albums this year. I dropped one two years ago with Snoop. But once again, you know, when they saw my ass coming up there looking like Baby Boy and, and, and Snoop Dogg and Baby Boy at that Stellar Awards and in that video, let me tell you, niggas was gagging. They can't take me. They never could. I never asked them to. Because I'm in that thing, but I'm not of that thing. I never have been. And neither have you. If you watching this, you, this is resonating with you because you know it's bullshit too. On many levels in the industry, not just gospel. Don't think I'm just talking about gospel. Yeah, that's where it all started. But it's shady shit in the whole game. Niggas, niggas is fighting for that spot. They, they know what I can do and they intentionally act like I don't exist. When you got that real thing, that oil and YouTube truthful, those of you who are watching, they try to pretend like your ass is even, they, they act like you don't even exist. Like, oh no, I, I don't see him. I, I'm up there wearing a lime green suit and y'all like, I, where, where is he? I'm so, what? He's, he's doing what? I can't. All of this takes tremendous amount of energy, but it does something else too. Our bodies are under a great deal of stress. If you don't let this grief out, you're asking for a stroke. You're asking for a heart attack. You're asking for high blood pressure. You're asking for it because you don't have a safe place or an outlet or a covering or a sailor or a vacation place to be able to reflect and contemplate and grieve safely without being called a punk or a faggot or weak or a pussy. No, I'm a human. Trying to create and maintain an artificial front contributes to that stress. Stress also manifests itself when you don't grieve properly in the body. Headaches, rashes, insomnia, digestive disturbances, the inability to concentrate, and the impulse to fidget or be on the move, always doing stuff. We may also have more colds and flus as well as unexplained pains in various parts of our body because our resistance is low due to the stress. One of the kindest things we can do for ourselves is to behave. Listen, you get to a point in grief where you like, I don't care, so I'm just... But you can't do that right now. I can't do that right now. Just because you're related doesn't mean that your relative does not have COVID. <laughs> we got the same blood and oh, that's just cousin so-and-so. He could have it and you don't. This is hard times, but we have to lock this thing down. And I know we want to gather because it's grieving time. But this is one of them times you really gonna have to depend on God because you can't just be spreading this stuff, especially to your elderly loved ones. And the, 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 the COVID virus has a different effect on everyone's body differently. For some, it triggers stroke. For some, it triggers heart attack. It's not just, oh, I don't, I don't care if I get it. It's just a cold, I'll get over it. That's dumb, crazy talk. Don't think because you're young or you don't have symptoms that you still cannot spread it or receive it. I get tested regularly. And even then, there's such things as false positives and false negatives. So you have to be very proactive about that. I know it's hard having to go through this grief by yourself. How we get through it as black people is usually fellowship and food and blunts and sex and cards and drinking and talking shit. <laughs> That's how we normally get through it. But we can't do that kind of stuff right now. If you think it can't happen to you, it can happen to you. My choir director, my leader's brother just died of COVID. Someone who taught our Bible class in January just died of COVID. 
I know people's parents that have died from having service with this COVID. I'm saying, why do we absolutely have to keep gathering? Can't we just like do like the early church did, which was meet in small groups of your own cell? Once you got people in your family that have been tested that are fine in one household, don't break that cell. Oh, I'm just going to go over to so-and-so's house. You know, ain't nobody over there. We all masked up. We all wearing, yeah, we all, you know, you know, talking all that shit. Then you come back not knowing that someone else they had visited and then don't ever come over there was with somebody else who had it. And now you done brought it back. And now you done super spread to your cell because you're the only one who stepped out of that cell. Do you see how this shit works? so frustrating so frustrating on a political level it's frustrating on a religious level it's it's twice as frustrating this is me this is the part right here i don't like to lean on other people they offer help but i don't want to bother them that was me during grief i didn't want to bother anybody Oh, just come over for Thanksgiving. You know, we'll cook something. We got something for you. Listen, I can't promise you I'm going to be able to pretend like I'm okay with this. I can't promise you I'm going to laugh at these jokes and be in the mood for a bunch of giggling and a bunch of snickering and kikiing and ha-ha. And I'm sorry. I'm not saying I'm going to be depressed all day either, but I can't pretend like I'm okay during this time. So I don't want to bother you. I don't want to come over for Christmas. Yeah, you like family, but you're not my family. And your mom is like my mom, but she's not my mom. Your dad is like my dad, but he's not my dad. See, no one's going to have this conversation. Because we're just supposed to deal with it. Independence and self-reliance are fine qualities for us to have. It's good that you can be proactive. And I'm, I'm glad I was able to dust myself off and move forward. I'm proud of myself for that during grief. But we don't need to push those priorities and qualities to the forefront. It's more important to recognize what we need emotionally than to see how successful we can suffer through it alone. Just trying to prove to other people that it didn't knock us down when it really did fuck us up. See, they don't want to have this conversation because they want to soothe you with in the sweet by and by. I believe that. I, I'm, I'm sure we will walk around heaven all day. But even Jesus wept. Grief is grief. You're blessed when you're mourn, when you mourn. It's a, it's a good thing when you're going through a mourning time. Blessed are they that mourn. They're going to be comforted. And blessed are meek, not false humility, but blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth or do well in what they plant into society because of their humility. It, humility comes before honor. And sometimes grief gets us to come out of our flesh out of our ego, out of our pride, out of our abilities and get back to the man or the woman in the mirror and say, why am I in this situation that I'm in right now that I'm not happy with? Here's a perfect chance for me to finally make a fucking decision that I like. Instead of keep making decisions for people who even if you choose the decision that they told you to make, they're still not satisfied with your ass. So how does that game work again? How does that work? How was that successful? What's up to my brother, Stan? I love you, man. How does that work again? So you might as well choose for your mental health, for whatever it takes for you to get through this time. This is not normal. Y'all been trying to make us feel like it's normal. Nigga, this ain't normal. How is it that the origin of this virus, the city and the countries that that came from, they don't have any cases? Why are we specifically doing so bad? Something's off. So until they figure this shit out, 
Please stay in your cell. See, you you don't tell me what to do. It ain't even that deep. This is a fear mongering. Okay, then. Then go on out there. Go swim in it. For those of you who don't want to wear masks, take it off, baby. Get your ass out there. Sniff it. Sweep it. Smack it. Oh, no. Whatever you want to do. Go get in it. Take, go bathe in it and shit. Have fun. But get away from me and get away from my family. If you if you don't want to wear that mask and it's inconveniencing your ass that much, take it off and go receive all the COVID you want. Get it, boo. Work. Sniffle, cough, sneeze. Go get it. Enjoy yourself since we're so off and this is a... a, a uh, in, infringing on your rights. No, you're infringing on my rights every time you go out in public without one. I need groceries like you do. We all in the same boat. Uh, uh, govern yourself accordingly. I'm just going out. We just going out. It ain't nothing. It's not even that deep. Keep on with that here. Oh, it ain't going to be nobody there. You know, we, we social distancing. How are you social distancing in a garage? How are you social distancing in the living room? How is that possible? You're breathing the same air. Back in the day, they used to have smoking sections inside of the restaurants. You could say, what section do you want to sit in? Smoking or non-smoking? So we would always say non-smoking, of course. But the smoking section, the smoke didn't stay in the smoking section. It wasn't like some kind of filter that like once the air got to a certain door that some HEPA filter sucked the, the smoke out so it wouldn't go into the non-smoking section. That smoke still drifted into the non-smoking section. So it really didn't matter if I picked smoking or non-smoking. I should have said smoke or less smoke should have been my choice. Not non-smoking because the smoke is still coming up over here. Fuck. So COVID's the same way. It's airborne. So you think it's just going to stay in your little section and you're standing under the same roof, taking the same circulated air and you don't think that something's going to hit you or you... that don't make no sense. Well, I don't believe it. COVID believes in you. I don't believe in gravity. OK, then jump off that building. Let's see how much it believes in you. I don't have to be true to my teeth. That's fine. They'll be false to you. You don't have to believe in science for science to work. Science is going to happen whether you listen to the, the warnings and the rules or not. But we're at a point now where people believe the lie before the truth. They prefer. They prefer to be spilling somebody's tea and running their mouth about someone that they ain't got no business even worrying about. And why were you watching it? If you so against it, why are you getting off watching it? Why are you sharing it? Since you're so offended, how did it spread so fucking fast? Because of your ass. So you must be interested and you ain't that offended by it. People who mean well often say things that make us feel worse rather than better. For example, they urge us to be brave, to substitute bravery for grief. It is usually those who have little to no experience with grief or having ever lost a loved one who will urge us to make courage our number one priority. Stay strong, bro. Stay strong. She would have wanted you to be strong. He would have wanted you to stay, you know, man, up. stay strong, man. You know, yeah, you got to stay strong. Stay strong. Keep your head up. Bitch, you still got all your family and you eating all of the funeral cupcakes. So it was easy for you to say that. It, it, it they are giving us their advice at a safe distance from our experience. So it's easy to give advice when you ain't been in that thing. It is not, in fact, a good idea for you to try to put bravery first when we're grieving. There's no law that says that we must always be brave in life no matter what happens. Sometimes our love is more important. Sometimes caring for others is more important. Sometimes holding back from something is more important. And sometimes grief is more important. It is true that grief requires courage, but it also in conjunction with other behaviors, 
First of all, we must look after our own emotional needs. I don't like it when I'm going through grief, but you still pulling on me emotionally as if I have extra to give to you. I don't have anything extra for you. There's no law that says that we have to do that. It is true that it requires grief. First of all, we must look at our own emotional needs. And if we need to cry, then that's what we need to do. If we need to ask for help or talk about our loss, then that's what we need to do. So before I even read this book, I already knew that I needed to talk to you because if I'm feeling like this, if I'm going through this grief and I'm going through this pandemic and I'm going through this racism, I know y'all fed up with this shit. This is hard. Courage is needed to get us through the whole grieving process, but the kind of courage that overrides all else will only block out the rest of the necessary grief related responses and conditions. When people tell me to be brave, I will remind myself that my first responsibility to myself is to grieve the loss of my loved ones. That's your first priority. Feel this shit. Feel it. Cry. When I first found out that Troy died, the sound that came out of me was embarrassing. But thank God I was with friends that would never exploit that type of a moment with me. Thank God I had people on the line with me because I didn't have anyone with me when I found out. And I didn't have anybody with me when I had to tell others about it who were also close with him, background singers, friends, family. It was an awful day last Wednesday. And a week later, I'm still just now eating. I'm still just now able to see my way out of a bed. I don't mean to offend anyone. I don't mean to ruffle anyone's feathers. If this is not your type of vibe, it will be after you go through the type of shit that folks of us who do get it have went through. Old folks used to say, you understand it better by and by, or they would tell me, keep on living. Keep on living, sis. Since you don't get where he's coming from right now, since this is too much for you, since you're so offended, flabbergasted and disappointed with this type of truth. But you can watch Kevin Hart and Tar Quentin Tarantino and, and uh, anybody else who says and does whatever they need to say. And it's a laugh. It's, it's entertainment. But for me, it's too much. But for me, I can't receive it. And this is why you don't have a congregation now. Because when people try to tell you what their needs really are and how they're really feeling, they're thrown to the side as if something's wrong with them or destroyed or ran over by a sanctified steamroller and then machine gun while they're on the ground. Laughed at and mocked. I didn't have to put myself out there. But I have just as much right as any other artist or human being to pursue my career just like anybody else. To make a living for my fucking self. I'm not sitting around here being a lazy ass. I work hard. I work harder than I should have to with the credentials that I have. But that's okay because my day is coming. I'm a resilient motherfucker. And I love my family and I love my friends. And I've been the same nigga all my life. Ask me me. This has been me. Ask my nephew, this has been me. This ain't nothing new. Anyone who really knows me knows I have been real with y'all from the beginning. I have never switched up. I tell all my business through my music I, so, so that you don't feel funny. I don't want y'all feeling funny about your reality or your human experience. I don't want you feeling embarrassed about going through life. I don't want you to feel isolated and so isolated because of the pandemic that folks think that you're fine and think next thing we know, we haven't heard from you in a couple of weeks. 
and nobody knows why. That's what first triggered this with Troy. Somebody said, I ain't seen Troy online. That's true, because the last few memes that I posted, our asses would have been busting up by now. So the fact that he ain't said nothing about the stuff I'm posting or he ain't posted or said something funny by now, something's wrong. Let me call homegirl. Hey, you heard from Troy? She's like, actually, I spoke to him like a week and a half ago, almost two weeks ago, but I don't know. Let me call his sister. So calls the sister. I see you. Oh, but he's going to be fine. He'll get out, whatever. A few hours later the next day, he's gone. We all got to go. But until then, have some compassion. Think twice before you just destroy people because it's fun for shits and giggles and you want to spill tea and be funny. We need to stop this shit, man. Somebody's not going to be as strong as I am. Somebody's not going to be as resilient as I am. They don't make them like me. They don't. So respect me. You don't have to like me. But you will respect me. And if you can't figure that out, I will help you respect me in a very nice way. I'm not an asshole. But I know my rights. I know my human rights. I know my spiritual rights. I know that I'm a good human being. I have feelings. I hurt like you. I have to take showers like you. I got to shit like you. I get horny like you. I want to drink like you. I want to knock somebody the fuck out like you. I'm you. So why are you acting new on me? Why are you acting like I'm saying something so bad? Like it's so, so over the top when I'm, I'm you in private. Respect that. Help someone along the way. Give them some assistance. Don't kick the crutches out from underneath them. Help them rehabilitate being acclimated to cooking again, brushing your teeth again. I'm telling you, grief will make you forget how to do normal shit. How do I comb my hair? How do I drink water again? Do I stand up or sit down? What day is this? You lose track of time. The pandemic has already made us lose track of time. We already don't know what day it is. <laughs> Just off a of pandemic. But when a, when, a, when a sudden loss of a parent, a child, I've had friends lose kids. Everything's not COVID related, but it's just death in general is popping right now. It's, it's unreal what's happening right now. So why can't we have more cushion? Mercy. Tell somebody if you wronged them, hey, back then I was in a really messed up space. I've grown. I've learned from them, but I own what I did. I apologize. I've had to do it. I've got called out on shit before. You understand what I'm saying? Like I've been confronted on some shit before. Yes. Because I was out of pocket. And I had to take that L and I had to ask for forgiveness and I had to get that shit straight. Scared to death because I knew I was wrong. So this, is, this isn't me asking for something that I haven't had to participate in my damn self. I'm just a real one. Don't you let these niggas put you in a stroke. Don't you let these niggas have you having an early demise because niggas end up dying at funerals from the stress. They went to a funeral and died at the funeral. It happens. Yes, we're sorry they died, but I still want to live. I'm sorry Troy is gone, but for the time that I am here, I want he would want me to say these things. He would want me to tell y'all, live your life. These niggas ain't got no heaven or hell to put you in. Whatever you need to get fixed, that's between you and God and that person. Go do that now because there's no guarantee 2021 is going to be anything. Because y'all acting like, oh, 2021 is around the corner. They're like, that's about to solve some shit. 
That don't mean nothing. It just means it's a full year that we've been dealing with this shit and we can't get it under control. And it's only so much longer people are going to be able to stay inside before shit start getting so real that folks really start saying what's on their mind. I'm mild compared to what niggas is about to do if some shit don't change soon. Politically, spiritually, church stuff, industry stuff, mainstream, gospel, wherever it's at. If something don't give here, everyone's going to speak their fucking mind. I'm just saying it out loud because you've been thinking this shit. This has been going on too long now. This is too, this has done gone way too far. Don't take your life. Don't take no sleeping pills. Don't drive your car off of the bridge. Don't stay inside of the car, inside of the garage and let your kids find you that way. Find some type of fucking way to fight. Check on your friends, even the ones that seem funny. Check on your aunties, check on your grandparents, check on your besties. Look them in their eye, FaceTime they ask. Look and check them and let them check you back. We want you to live through this and be able to look back on this era in retrospect as a time of growth and learning and discovery. Not a time that your chapters ended early because you didn't talk to someone or grieve properly or you didn't have a pastor or a counselor or a grief counselor or a therapist or music or some type of hobby or some type of athletic outlet so that you can stay in balance while you're going through this process. I don't have all the answers, but I do have a lot of wisdom and experience in this area. I have lost more than I have gained in life. I have. I've had more losses than gains. But when those gains come, I appreciate them so much more because I know I try to deliver the best, truest message possible. I don't mean no harm. I want y'all to make it through this and you will. I've done it several times. It's not easy. I'm still, there's still fresh, still fresh deaths. And I, but I've been through this 20 times. Those are just the funerals I attend. That's not to mention all the other losses where I couldn't be there. Like my cousin Alfonso this year. my godfather, Pastor Jesse Franks. Bishop Ellis. You can't shout over this one. You can't just twerk over this one. You can't just drink over this one. You can't just sex over this one. Yes, it may comfort you for the time being, but that shit's going to run out and you're going to need a a strong, a strong anchor and foundation in true grief. The blessing is in the morning. If there's someone on here that's thinking about taking your life or thinking about calling it quits, let us know now so we can tell you, hey, you are loved. We don't have to know your name, but we love you just the same. We're praying just the same. We understand where you're coming from. We see your frustrations. We see your anger. We understand the uncertainty that we are in right now on top of that grief. The fact that you're even watching this is a sign that you ending your life or you taking matters into your own hands is not the way to go about this. Rethink this. Trouble doesn't last always. Tough times don't last for long. It's just longer than normal. 
but don't do that. Do not think about doing that. Do you know how many people are going to miss you and how much more we're going to have to grieve over your ass if you don't do some dumb shit? If you die, I'll kill you. So think twice. I know I got relatives that told me, go ahead and die here. I will kill you. Get your shit together. Yes, this hurts. Cry. Go off. Do whatever you need to do. But then get up and wash your face. And brush your teeth. Wash your ass. Change clothes. Grab you some wine. Finish writing your script. Take some nice pictures of yourself. Doctor them up. <laughs> You're not alone. You're not alone. Slade is right here. And I'm going to be here. You know why I'm going to be here? Because I've been here. I ain't went nowhere. Y'all got amnesia. I've been grinding. Y'all forgot about me. Y'all stopped looking for me. I never stopped. Because I don't. I'll be back. Every time they press me down, you just give me buoyancy to bounce right back up on that ass. Even greater. You know why? Because I believe in myself. If God's on my side, he's more than the world against me, my nigga. I don't care. You can't cancel me. You can't blacklist me. You, you, you can try all you want to, and it may seem like you are successful, and you try to cancel people. Now the world is canceled. We got off on cancel, cancel culture so much on Twitter that now the whole world's canceled. Now what? Who's canceled now? Looking dumb. <laughs> we in this together. I don't care how much money you got. Your amenities may last for a little while, but eventually COVID, plagues, famine, disease, pestilence, racism, eventually somewhere near you or close to you is going to happen. Gemini, Ray, we are here for you. You are not taking your life. You are not alone. You are not a failure. You are not a disappointment. You are going through a valley of the shadow of death. But you're not supposed to run through these things. You're supposed to walk through them. Because there's part of this experience that is good for you. Maybe this is stopping you from making some other not good choice in your life. Maybe this was a good pause in your life to get you to rethink or get you out of something that you shouldn't have been in anyway. Think of it that way. So not, not that you're weak, you're stronger for speaking up that you need the help. You're stronger because of that. That's not weak. You're not a punk for saying I need help. You're not, you're not soft for saying, help me. I, I thought I could do one more lap, but I'm getting a cramp. Can somebody help me? What do we do? We laugh at them while the person's struggling swimming with a stomach cramp. Take pictures of it and then share the struggle. Make whole episodes out of somebody's struggle. And love it. And laugh at it and share it. But then when it hits your house, you want everybody to have mercy on your ass. You want everybody to have understanding and compassion on your ass. But while someone else is down, here you come. Because you don't want no one to really pay attention to the shit you doing. That's what the real tea is. Because if you want to be honest... That was just a video. Folks, real life in that industry, it's 
it's no different. And everyone's known that. So when are we going to have that discussion? Why y'all keep singling out niggas when it's basically all the niggas? So what? Don't single people out. Why y'all always... So y'all don't attack lesbians? You only attack gay people? You notice they don't talk about girls in church. You don't hear too many sermons about lesbians and stems and studs and stuff. You don't hear too much about that. You hear about guys, gays, faggots, all this kind of stuff. It's always like some kind of like, it's still a form of misogyny because it's like, if you act like a woman or you like, then that means you, you are a woman. So therefore you are automatically lower than you feel what I'm saying? So if, 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 we don't hear that. You only hear about guys. Keep that same energy up about that too. Y- y'all don't be dragging none of the girls. There's plenty of that. But you don't, that doesn't come up. I'm saying if you're going to do it one way, be fair with it. Don't just pick one person. Let's, let's put the shit on out there then. If we're going to play these kind of games, everybody's been fucking... Everybody's been doing whatever they want to do behind closed doors. If you, it, what? Who's exempt? Who, who do you think you're fooling? Mind your business. Keep your mask on. Keep your mouth shut. Show some, show some love, some virtual hugs. Tell someone you heard them. Not just letting them run their mouth, but you actually heard what they're saying. I love y'all. I love y'all. For real, for real. And I miss my friend. The book I was reading from is called A Time to Grieve. I'm going to probably go through it a couple of times. I'm sure it's on Audible. It's by um, Carol Studacher or Stoudacher. S-T-A-U-D-A-C-H-E-R. But the, the book is called A Time to Grieve. And it's really helping me now of course I broke it down in Oak Park Dago style you know little ratchet but it's real Um, I'm just too exhausted to pretend like I can be polite anymore so pardon my French but this shit's for the birds help somebody love on somebody love on somebody I love you guys I love y'all hang in there hang on hang on hang on hang on hang on hang in there nothing but love nothing but love absolutely nothing but love show love Show each other love. These are people's lives that y'all playing with here. Show some love. Y'all be the same one putting some RIPs and roses and doves. Rest in peace, so-and-so. The one we killed for pure fun and entertainment. Just for shits and giggles. Show some love. If someone needs to ask for forgiveness, let them ask for forgiveness and don't judge their apology. If you say you want them to apologize, once they finally do, you can't be a critic about the apology because they don't apologize the way you want them to. Either accept it and know that they tried or move the fuck on and you don't want it to be solved. You don't want to squash it because if you really want to squash it, 
All it takes is the simple fact that they took the effort to try to get it right. That's more than enough for me. The rest is you being petty and childish. Grow the fuck up. Life goes on. Shit happens. There are more important things in the world than holding grudges and dying and not getting it right. And it's happening every day. And it could be me tomorrow. No one is guaranteed. No one is exempt from this situation. So while we're here, love each other through this era so we can look back on it years from now in retrospect and say that this, this is the strongest, resi most resilient generation that has ever come on the planet up until this point. And I believe that's who I'm speaking to now. Gemini, keep striving. You got this. Absolutely. Thank you, Miss Avery, for the love. I love you guys. I love you guys. So much love for you and everyone on here. Yes, God is love. Absolutely. You got this. You got this. That's right. If you ain't got the love, then keep it quiet. I'm with that all day. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you guys so much. Oh, I love y'all. Mm, mm, mm. You're worth it. Your life is worth it. Your family may not understand you, but how will they ever learn to understand you if you rob them of that chance by taking your life? How can they say sorry? How can they get it correct if you cut yourself off first? Give them a chance. Give folks a chance to see that you turn things around. Don't cut yourself off before you do that. Don't take your life before you get a chance to prove these niggas wrong. Because that's what you got to do. Shut these motherfuckers down. Make sure they know if they tried it, because niggas try it. That's what they do. Niggas that ain't chasing their own dreams and shit, that's what they do. But make sure you let them know they didn't stop nothing. If anything, you fueled me. You were my gasoline. So thanks for pumping me up. Thanks for gassing me. I appreciate it. You just pushed me closer to what I was trying to get to anyway. Feeling so lonely, feeling so down when you need someone, no one's there to be found. The pain inside can't be expressed verbally So you cry on your pillow You don't know what you're saying But I know an interpreter of tears And when you voice to cry It lends an open ear Oh, God understands the he knows all about all your pains and your fears When you're right and when you're wrong When your friends are gone He's a shoulder to cry on God understands your tears You can't keep it bottled inside so just let it out In God you confide That's what he's there for He knows all your pain It's alright to cry Trouble come in the morning But I know an interpreter of your tears When you voice the cry the lens and open God understands the language of tears He knows all about all your pain And your fears when your eyes and your wrong When your friends are gone He's a shoulder to cry on 
God understands your tears. He understands the language of tears. He knows all about all your pains and your fears. When you're right and you're wrong, when your friends are gone, He's a shoulder to cry on. God understands the truth. I sing this. He understands your tears. It's so right to cry. Go to my IG page. The first three blocks has this song. It's so right to cry. I sing this song. It's only available on my Instagram, the first three blocks on my page.
And I know it feels lonely. But the same way you weren't expecting this to come by. You have angels all around you that are comforting you, that will help you through this time. God knows all about your pains and your fears. I promise you, man. God's been a good dad to me. He's been a real friend to me. When your friends are gone, they turn their backs so or they die. He's a shoulder to cry on. They'll never separate me from the love of God or my love for God. My authenticity is not a contradiction to my walk. It's an affirmation to the truth and authenticity of my relationship. And it's growing. I'm getting better every day. I feel good. I feel blessed. I'm glad y'all still here. You're not alone. You got folks in this room with you. You have friends that love you and care about you. You got internet friends you've never even met before that are in this room with you. You're not in that room in that quarantine by yourself. Hold on. Hold on. My faith gets weak too. I use um, Pray.com to have the Bible read to me. Pray.com. Real good. 